Rocco's got herself a brand new winter outfit. It's a two piece. This one is like a puffy down insulated one. This goes on first. So this is her first layer of warmth. But the thing I don't like about these jackets on their own is that they always like flip up the back and air gets underneath there. So I have this second layer, which just ties the whole package together. You look good, Rocco. Good morning. So we're in the Purcell Mountains today doing a mission up Sultana Peak. Here with my friend Tim today. Hi. <laughs> Short and steep one, eh? Yes, yeah, very steep. <laughs> I was all excited to try out Rocco's new snowsuit today, but it's warm out. It's nice out for October. Feels like a summer day. Yeah, I'll just keep going up the middle here and see if we can make it to the top. Definitely some challenges ahead of us. Hey, if you're gonna climb that, man, I gotta get it on camera. I gotta get the drone out. <laughs> that looks intense. Yeah. Is it easy where you are? Yeah, there's a nice ramp right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're ready for the mountains now. Yeah, Rocco's nice and toasty now. At a cost of most of her coordination. I don't trust her to scramble across this ridge line. Now these mountains in the Purcells always seem to be holding some kind of surprise. It's never just a stroll up to the summit. But we both made it and uh, we have a spectacular view of Mount Nelson today. Just going to soak this in for a minute and head on back down. My name's Tim and this is my bus here. It's a 2003 Ford Econoline E350 with the 7.3 diesel in it, which is the one that you want to get because it's good on mileage and it lasts a long time. I've got the, an awning on the outside here with the light. I've got a roof rack so I can haul my kayaks up there, one on each side. Mm -hmm. I've got my my number here from when I was in school. I rode the same school bus for 13 years from kindergarten to grade 12 and so I decided to put that on here when I got my own bus. And then I've got the water filler to fill up my water tank that I have inside. How much capacity do you have? I can show you here. I have it measured. It's just a little bit over 100. 100 liters, so I measured it in four liter increments and marked it. That took a lot of work. And then I have um, this hot water shower that can connect to there, and then you hook up a small propane tank to it here. And I hook the this guy up here, and then I have little clips here and then here and I have a shower curtain built that kind of encloses this whole back area so then you can shower here and you have the water there was a light but it broke so then you can see and you can adjust the temperature and the flow so it's uh, 
It's it's pretty slick. And this is the inside. So I've got. Um, we can start with this. The wiring's a mess, but I have a battery here, a 200 amp hour lithium ion battery with a heater built in and a little screen that tells me my voltage. And then the Victron inverter, 2000 watt inverter, so I can power everything that I need. And I, I have the, the battery voltmeter here so I can see it while I drive. And also the, well, we can't see it, it's under the seat. It's the 60 amp Renogy DC to DC charger that you gave me, thank you. <laughs> I had a 40 amp and I switched to the 60 amp. Um, yeah, I've got a bookshelf up here that I made with live edge and um, a nice little plexiglass thing so you can stack the books up and see them. It looks nice when they are stacked up, but they all fall over when you're driving, of course. I have a curtain, an insulated curtain that my mom made for every single window in here. So this covers this window, this big one up here, covers the windshield. I have one for the bus door for every single window all on the sides. They all roll down and they're insulated so it can, you can keep it pretty toasty in here in the winter with these. I've got the seat so this, this can swivel if I remember how to do it. This can swivel. Really, really lounge back in here. <laughs> and it has a seat belt and a leaf but yeah you can you can really get pretty comfortable with this guy so how long have you had this bus um i bought it in the fall of 2017 so yeah seven years yeah and it was converted already when i bought it but i used it for a couple years and then figured out what i wanted and then changed it all and i my friend is a cabinet maker, so we did it together. Um, that's why it has all this fancy. Like the wood grains and stuff are all lined up and the gaps are all really nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> and we've got like the hinges and the we rotored in handles here and we have that soft closing. And I have the original lights. I left them in here so I can see inside inside there oh yeah and then i put a strip lighting underneath here so you can see you know mm -hmm. when you're cooking and doing stuff here and i have a uh, sink from that gets water from that tank in the back so, mm -hmm. that's pretty pretty handy a cutting board that fits on top there a propane stove a nice simple generic one so if it breaks on the road i can fix it go to an RV shop and get another one or get some parts. Mm -hmm. I have the, I insulated all the windows all the way, all the way down so you can see that it's like an inch and a half there. And it already had two inches of insulation in the, in the, around the windows and in the roof. And I added an inch of insulation in the floor. So it's pretty well insulated when you roll down all the curtains. Mm -hmm. And I have a diesel s-bar heater here that's what's, controlled what's the coldest temperature you've ever done i've slept in it in minus 28 a few times and it's stayed cozy it stayed cozy and i have the the s-bar controller here so when i'm in bed i can just reach over and make it warmer or cooler as i need and i have a plug in here that so i can charge stuff and mm -hmm. um i ran a saw off this and a grinder I can do 15 amps from this plug so it's pretty handy when I was finishing a few things here I just plugged plugged the saw right in and was using it inside to finish stuff up a real actual mattress with Egyptian cotton sheets so it's really comfy and cozy nice pillows and I've got the blanket across the back to help keep the draft down from the from the back door and the heater sucks air from under there and blows it out here so it's constantly circulating warm air in there so my tank won't ever freeze, my water tank. So that, that's a nice feature. So I kind of designed it to live in or to at least use as much as I can as a base camp for 
hiking and skiing, motorcycling, just yeah. everything in all seasons. Anything else you'd like to add? Or so, no, that's about it. Yeah, thanks so, for thanks for showing me around. Thank you. <laughs> Tim had to head back into civilization there, but I get to stay a while longer. So I'm gonna try this uh, route that goes up Redline Peak. Beautiful forecast today, I can't believe it. it feels like August. Yeah, this is spectacular road bed. <laughs> this is fun. Well, I think that's end of the line for the e-bike. Saved us a lot of time though, otherwise I think this might actually be a two-day trip without that. Yeah, start bushwhacking now. See if we can find our way up this valley. Uh, before I start bushwhacking, I'm just making darn sure there's not actually a nice stomp down footpath through here, but I don't think there is. It's looking like this is a, a bushwhack for sure. Are starting to get up there. It's like this is the last bit of forest I gotta go through. Break into the alpine soon. What a fantastic day. I didn't show on the way down Sultana. It took way longer than expected. The sun set, it got dark. Tim had the foresight to bring a headlamp. I didn't. Scrambling down these steep ledges in the darkness, it was a bit hectic. Made sure to pack in my headlamp today in case this winds up being a long one too. Coming up on a viewpoint of the Delphine Glacier now. Wow. I definitely feel like it's worth a little pathway being cut down there to access this. This is quite the viewpoint. I've been to so many beautiful places over the years, but in my opinion, this whole area of the Kootenays, it takes the cake. The scale, the magnitude, the ruggedness, the remoteness, the endless selection, the accessibility. I got here in four hours. There's nobody here, there's no crowded trails to deal with. I have this whole mountain range to myself today. <laughs> in, my, in my opinion, this is it. Nowhere else are my legs this excited to carry me forward. I found a trip report online, a group went up the other side from Horse Thief, but this is all just guesswork from this side, I don't know if it actually goes. It's an interesting pattern, it looks like a fossil to me. I took one wrong step, I punched through the ice, got a double soaker. Ah, oh, I'm so close to the top, I gotta keep going. That looks promising, I can just hike right up this gully here to the top of the mountain. Getting hit by the odd ice cold wind gust. Stark reminder that it is October in Canada. Once I get to the top of this, it's gonna be the moment that makes or breaks this entire trip. Whether or not this ridgeline reasonably connects up to the top. We were below that, now we're above it. Not too shabby. Still don't know if this is gonna work or not. Don't ask me how, but I believe these guys got all the way up here in a snowmobile. It's kind of impressive. There's uh, Sultana Peak on the right, that's where I was with Tim. Mount Nelson, then Mount Delphine, and Mount Farnham, the highest mountain in the Purcells. Spectacular day for a mountain summit.
we're gonna have us some mulligatawny soup tonight. This whole package is likely gonna overwhelm my poor little pot. I'll see if I can divide it in half somehow. Well, that took a long time to simmer. It's 10 o'clock now. I'm almost too tired to eat. I'm just ready to crash. But I took a couple bites of this. It seemed like it was missing something. And I read on uh, the directions, you're supposed to add a tart apple into it. So I missed that part. And uh, I just decided to mix in a little maple syrup instead just to sweeten it up. And that tied it together. That did the trick. It's, uh, it's pretty good now. It feels really good to get out on a regular basis once again into the mountains. I've just been uh, cranking out as many summits as I can and I, I shall continue so long as this weather holds out. All it takes is one day and uh, everything could change. It could all be over but yeah I'm really tired. I'm just going to try to finish this soup but I'm going to go straight to bed. So I'll wrap up this episode here. Thanks uh, for coming along and watching this one. Hope everyone's doing good. I'll see you in the next one.